Hi, you alright? So, trapezium wall, okay? And it just keeps on going, doesn't it? The integration chapter just keeps on going, okay? So you've got all the inspection questions, you're like, oof, just about managed to get onto those, maybe. And then you've got, bam, substitution, and then by parts, you're like, oh man, and partial fractions, crikey. And then you've got a little bit of easing up with the areas under the curves, okay? And then, bam, straight into it, trapezium wall. But you've not had the best bit yet, okay? It does get much harder after this. Mm. This is actually pretty easy. It's actually pretty easy, okay? It's just a wall that I've got to remember. All right, um, I've just put this up in advance, so you just have a quick look at it now, okay? So, see that? Yeah, suppose you need to find the area between x is zero and pi over three, um, bounded between the x-axis, of course, and this graph, and you know that the equation is y equals sec x. How do you integrate y equals sec x? That's a question, isn't it? Okay, how do you do that? Um, in a video, maybe after this, or a couple of videos down the line, um, I'll look into that, how to integrate y equals sec x, because it's not, it's not an easy one. Okay? But it's for things like these where the trapezium rule actually really help. Okay? They really do help. So let's have a look to see what the trapezium rule is all about. Okay? Well, what I'm going to do is just draw out a set of axes, nice and large like that. Okay? And I'm going to draw on there a generic curve. Okay? What do I mean by a generic curve? I mean just this, really, for presentation purposes. That's all. Okay, just for presentation purposes. Okay. Um, now suppose you need to work out the area bounded between the curve, the x-axis, and these two lines here, where x equals a and x equals b. Okay. How would you express that? You'd express it as integral limits a and b f of x dx. That's how you do it. Okay, that's what the area is, isn't it? Okay. Suppose this function is too difficult or impossible to integrate. Yeah. Unfortunately, there are some things that are impossible to integrate. Okay. Well, what do you do? You don't just think, well, okay, you won't do that. Because what does an engineer do? What does a physicist do? Okay. They don't just stop and think, well, it can't be done. They find a way of doing the next best thing, which is to try and approximate it. This is what the trapezium wall is. It's an approximation. Okay, it's an approximation solution. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, um, I'm going to divide the area into different strips. I've called them strips for a reason. That's what we call them. Okay, there we go. Now we could use a rectangle to split it up, but can you see that? The gap in between the rectangle and the curve is actually quite big. So what we do is instead we use a trapezium. And if you have a look, it's actually not too bad, is it? It's pretty good, the way I've drawn my curve anyway. But can you see the trapezium shape lends itself very well because it minimises the, um, the difference between the actual area and the approximation area. Okay? Um, if I just shade in the top, these are gaps. Okay? I'm just going to shade them in a little bit. This shows you what the error actually is, okay? But what we are going to do is going to divide the area into different trapeziums, okay? Now the whole thing hinges on you making sure that the strips of equal thickness. We call them H, okay? For reasons you'll see very soon, okay? So the width of each of these strips is H. What we're going to do is we're going to work out what the heights of all these are, okay? They're called ordinates. You don't need to know that, but they're called ordinates, like coordinates, but ordinates. Coordinates means there's two of them, or the, the one that corresponds to one of the ordinates, okay? Um, but I'm just going to call them heights for a moment, okay? Well, that is determined by the y coordinate of these points I'm pointing to, okay? So I'm going to call that length y0, y1, y2, y3, and that one would be y4, okay? that make sense? Okay, good. Now, how do you improve the approximation? Okay, suppose you work out the area of each of these, how do you improve the approximation? Very good. You increase the number of trapeziums, you increase the number of strips. Okay, so if I just rub this out a little bit, okay, if I also rub out what I'm calling H there, if I fit in more of these strips, okay, like that, can you see? what's going to happen is the gap in between 
the actual top of the trapeze and the curve is a bit smaller and smaller. How do I increase it further? Use more strips. What is the optimum number of strips we're going to use? That's right. If you have an infinite number of strips, think about it for a moment. If you have an infinite number of strips, you'd effectively have almost like straight lines, wouldn't you? And that would perfectly fill up the entire area. Okay. I'll talk about that um, a little bit later. Okay. But what I'm going to do for the moment is say I'm going to divide it up into n strips. Um, y1, y2, y3. Uh, that one at the end will be yn, yn minus 1. I'm going to put dot, dot, dot there to represent all the strips in between. So I've got n strips. Okay? I should strictly write down n trapezia. Okay? Trapeziums, it's not quite correct, it's trapezium. Okay. Or trapezoids, if you're American. Okay? Um, so n of these trapezia. So can you see why this one's y0? Okay, so I just ignore that. That y one's for the first trapezium, y2 for the second trapezium, y3 for the third one, and so on, yn for the nth one. So what I've done is I've called all those lengths there, y1 through to yn, but as an extra length there it needs to be called something, so we call it y0 traditionally. Okay. Um, right. What we need to do as a formula for dividing to n strips is to come up with an expression for each of these areas are. Now then, on the reverse of this, okay, as a reminder of what a trapezium looks like. You see that? I'm just checking that you can see it properly. Yeah. See that trapezium? Yeah. And you might think, oh, hang on, you've labelled it the wrong way around. No, I haven't, because each of these trapeziums, look, see? See, a lot of thought has gone into this one, hasn't it? Oh, I planned that out completely, didn't I? Yeah, so that is the height of a trapezium. That and that we call A and B. They're the two parallel lengths, okay? And the formula for the air of a trapezium is half A plus BH. Let's put it down as a reminder, as if we need a reminder, but yeah, it's there for safekeeping, okay? Um, all right, so, look. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of here write down this is approximately because it's an approximation, isn't it? It's not exactly the same. It's approximate. Okay. And we'll have, let's have the air of the first trapezium to give them a show. Half. And then it's going to be y0 plus y1 times by h. See that? Half y0 plus y1 times by h. Okay. And then the second trapezium. Okay. Half. What's that going to be? Y1 plus Y2. So that's the second trapezium there I'm talking about. Okay? Y1 plus Y2. H. Now it's kind of a shame because I can't fit all this on, unfortunately. Because I don't have my normal board. That's why. Um, so I'm just going to put plus here. And it's going to be what? Um, half. I'll just put the next one. Uh, that one there. So Y2 plus Y3, yeah? Plus Y3 times by H, and then plus dot, 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 okay? You seen the film Mamma Mia? Yeah? Dot, dot, dot! Yeah, you know the scenes I mean? Yeah? Mmm. Almost every time I write dot, 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 and I say dot, 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 that sort of scene goes in my head. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, there you go. Um, anyway, you're going to watch Mamma Mia now, aren't you? Last one, so it's going to be half YN minus one, plus yn, h, done, okay. Well, we'd like to simplify that a bit, okay. Maybe you just pause the video and see if you can simplify it. Unpaused, great, okay. All right, so all that equals, don't forget this is supposed to be one line, so when you write a note of this, try and fit it all in one line, if you could, yeah, that's great. Okay, we can try and simplify this. Well, how can we simplify all this? Take out common factors, okay. Half is an obvious common factor, h is an obvious common factor as well, yeah. And then next, right, the way I write this out is I use those kind of brackets. So I've got brackets within brackets, I say. Okay. Um, y0 appears once, doesn't it? Okay. And then what have we got? We've got y1 appearing twice, y2 appearing twice, y3 will appear twice, all up to what's the last term that will appear twice? Yeah, yn minus 1. Okay, so 2y1 plus up to yn minus 1. And then the last term, yn appears once, doesn't it? And I'm kind of pleased because I managed to fit all of that onto one line. Okay? That is your trapezium rule formula. Okay? That is your trapezium rule formula. All right? It is the area is approximately equal to that. Okay? 
And you fold to write it out neatly, okay, as a memory thing, because that's what you're going to do probably. Okay, I'd write area is approximately. Do you notice how I use the equal sign there? Were you happy with that? Remember, that is equal to that. Okay, but this is approximately equal to that, okay? That's how the equal sign worked in there. It wasn't an error, it was yeah, done on purpose. So that's your trapezium rule, okay? That's your trapezium. I'll stand out in case you want to take a nice screenshot of that. Yeah, that lovely. Well, it's all right, actually. It's not... It's not actually integration, is it? It's not actually calculus. It's, a, it's an approximation method. So it's... Um, it's not my favourite bit in the chapter. Okay, it's alright, because okay, it's got graphs and stuff, and it's, you know, it's got an integral sign to keep me happy, okay, but it's not actually integration. Okay. The best questions ask you to integrate something and then ask you to use this to um, estimate the area and see if your approximation is approximately <laughs> correct. See if your approximation is approximately correct. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I'm not an English teacher. No. Um, anyway, yep, so there we go. Um, right, so recap then. So if you want to work out the area, let's, have, let's get this one back up, shall we? If you want to work out the area of that, whoops, this is just gone now, this is the trouble with boards, isn't it? Because you know, if you want to work out the area of that as an approximation, just divide that up into trapezia, okay? And then just substitute into that formula, okay? And I'll give you an example coming up next as to how that is used, all right? I'll do it in a separate video, okay? Because I don't want the files to be too big. Well, coming right up.